Hey guys, welcome back to Lost Genre Reddit, Am I the A-hole? This one's from user SadClownPose15. Am I the a-hole for not buying a perfume for my boss? Basically, I, 23 female, have awful luck. I mean, genuinely terrible, and it gets worse around holidays. Pretty sure I'm cursed. In order to get around that, I Christmas shop in mid to late summer almost exclusively. The conflict happens when a few days ago, my boss, 33 female, was chatting with me while we were on break, and she heard my phone go off a few times. She asked what it was, and I told her I have shipping notifications for all of my packages come through their apps, my email, and text message. She asked what I ordered, and I, assuming it was just small talk, said I ordered perfume for my stepmom, cologne samples for my dad, not familiar with those particular scents, and he's had the same cologne since I was six, and a perfume for my friend who I work with. My boss got quiet and then asked what the occasion is and I explained that something always happens to me around holidays, so I'm just getting my shopping done early. She brightened and we started chatting about perfumes and she named off a couple by Tom Ford she likes and I laughed and mentioned I bought one of her listed ones for our coworker. My boss asked if I needed her help picking out one for her, my boss. And I must have looked at her odd because she mentioned company policy says if we buy gifts for one person, we have to buy something of similar value for everyone we work with. Which is absolute BS because I had to ask our branch manager and HR about it last year for this specific reason. Well, I mentioned what I know about policy and she got angry, left and came back red faced. I assumed she asked and was told she was wrong, and lectured me about being inconsiderate to her and her feelings. She's a single mother with an infant and three other young kids, two to nine year olds. So she brought that against me and it made me angry. I went off and told her that her salary is double mine and I have to save up to buy anything nice and once a year I choose to save to buy people I love nice gifts. I got an earful about bragging and rubbing it in people's faces. I told her she was the one who asked about my phone notifications and orders. Now people we work with are conflicted, which annoys me because why did she bother telling everyone about our spat? Just take it to HR. Some people say I should have been more considerate. Some say I need to buy her a nice gift because she's my manager and a few are saying they agree that she started the conflict in the first place. Now I'm starting to feel bad because technically I could get her something like what I've already ordered, but I also don't make much as is and this is a massive purchase for me. So Reddit, am I wrong? Am I the a-hole? The judgment is not the a-hole. Now let's take a look at the top comments. Ams Lou says, not the a-hole, your boss is out of line. Gifts flow down in an organization, not up. That's because you end up in a situation with an awkward power dynamic, like this one, where you feel obligated to buy a present for your boss. The Hippie Druid says, Not the a-hole. Your boss sounds like there is a good reason why she has four kids and no husband if you get my drift. OP's update number one. It's been a couple of hours. Thanks for your responses. I took everyone's advice and talked to HR who called my boss in for mediation, did not go well. Basically, she tried to turn it into a race issue. I'm white, she's black. She told HR I was excluding her because she's black. And now I'm meeting HR and our top managers in a few days to discuss the issue. They seemed exasperated when she mentioned race because this same manager has been racist to my friend on multiple occasions. She's Mexican moved to the States four years ago, and it's just been a lot. In the meantime, I'm still on duty. Manager is off for vacation starting tomorrow. I guess I'll update later. Okay, OP, regarding the gift thing, you're definitely not the a-hole. You're buying things for people that you love. It's Christmas. You're not obligated to give your boss or manager some gift. She's way out of line. And regarding the race thing, sounds to me like she's the racist one because she's bringing up the fact that you're white and she's black. This is a personal issue for you. It has nothing to do with skin color. So why bring it up? Anyways, that's just my opinion. 
What do you guys think about OP and her manager? So, while you think about it, let's continue with the update to see how this story finishes. So, I did talk to HR, which was an issue because my boss did as well, but tried to spin it into a racial thing. I'm white, my friend is Mexican. Which didn't work out for her, thank God. Basically, she said that my excluding her from a gift exchange is racist because obviously she's not involved because she's ex-race. HR and our bosses essentially told her to cut the crap because 1. It's September and 2. They can't keep us from exchanging gifts outside of work, which is where we do it anyway. What did unexpectedly become an issue for not just me, but also my friend and other co-workers in our department is our weekly coffees. Each of us takes turns buying coffee from a local shop and having it delivered once a week. And that was done on the clock. Bosses explained that unless we're buying for everyone, we can't do it. Thing is, we used to buy it for everyone. Our former managers all had a turn as well. But the new boss is pretty selfish and made it clear that she wouldn't take a turn, so we don't offer to buy her a drink. Which offends her because now, in a group of between 4 to 8 people, she's the only one left out on coffee days. While that's still not racist, it's considered exclusionary, so not allowed anymore. Sucks, but I guess we'll just have to deal with that. So yeah, not a major update. No one got fired or switched departments or anything. I just know that this manager isn't one I can count on to be friendly or even professional. HR didn't count it as a verbal warning, just a closed door meeting, so I don't have to worry about that. And yes, I did receive the perfume I ordered for my friend. I do have to wrap it still, but I'm insanely excited for Christmas so I can give it to her. Also ordered a purse for another friend, which is majorly exciting because hers was duct taped together last I saw. Additional update before publishing. My boss is still going on a bit of a rampage. We work most weekends. And it's now being escalated further. I have another meeting with HR on Monday. Quick edit. Thanks to everyone for their reply. Except the one guy down below that took it somewhere it didn't need to go. Honestly, the whole situation started off with me feeling guilty about having no intention of buying this woman a gift. And resulted in our weekly coffee runs being banned, which hurts way more. We all work at different times. I work at 4am, some work at 6am, a couple at 8am, etc. So just grabbing coffee before work is pretty hard to do. But I really appreciate everyone giving their thoughts on how to manage it. It's been an interesting morning so far. There's a ban on coffee runs at my work. So the other two managers have spent a portion of the morning getting everyone orders to do a coffee run on my manager's day off. Definitely some pettiness there. And I think everyone is tired of this. Some of the people from other departments that worked under my manager said she did some similar stuff with them. Just not involving coffee or presents. So I'm not being singled out yet. I'm watching for any retaliation in the meantime, like one user suggested. But that's all I can do right now. This is just so incredibly frustrating because we'd get our drinks. Uber Eats is wonderful, isn't it? Have a chat and we'd set the mood for our morning and afternoon with that spot of positivity. Well, this just goes to prove that a manager, somebody in a leadership position, is the one that sets the environment for the team to work in. If you have a crappy manager, you're going to have a crappy environment and nobody's going to be happy. Unfortunately, OP did not give us an update as to what happened after that second HR meeting. So this is all we know up to this point. In my opinion, that manager is the a-hole and just likes to stir up drama out of nowhere. She seems very entitled to think that she doesn't need to be in the coffee run but then complains that she doesn't get a free coffee. Come on, what the hell? Anyways, what do you guys think? This one's from user throwarray9874996. Am I the a-hole for kicking a friend out of my house for what she said? Earlier today, I had two friends over to watch a game and catch up as social distancing rules eased up a bit in my area. We're all women in our early 30s. One friend, let's call her A, has had a very tough couple of years. She lost her husband last year. He was on deployment when he passed away and tragedy struck again when her six-year-old son passed away from cancer a few months ago. 
Needless to say, she was and still is devastated, and this was the first time she felt like hanging out since the loss of her son. My other friend, let's call her B, is very traditional and religious, while friend A and myself are not religious at all. But our differing views have never been an issue and we've gotten along just fine with friend B since we met her 4-5 to five years ago. Friend B has brought up what she believes are the benefits of religion to us a few times in the past but always dropped the subject when we weren't responsive to it. Neither friend A or I ever held any ill feelings towards her about this, as she wasn't too pushy with her beliefs. On to the situation that took place today. We were listening to friend A pour her heart out and doing our best to console her while being a shoulder to cry on. Friend A, through tears, said, I don't know what I did wrong in my life to deserve to lose her husband and son. Instantly, friend B exclaimed, Well, I can tell you that. You didn't allow God and the Bible into your life, so God punished you for it. Can you blame him? Friend A just looked at her in awe. I lost it. I yelled at her that what she said was totally uncalled for and unbelievably hurtful. Then I got up, opened the front door and told her to get the hell out of my house and never contact me again. She tried to backtrack and say that she wasn't trying to be hurtful. But I wasn't having any of it. I yelled again, just get out of my house right now. Don't make me throw you out like a piece of trash. She huffed and left. Friend A was bawling at this point, but said thank you. We continued talking and she calmed down after a while. Looking back now, I realized that I possibly could have handled the situation better. Both friend A and I never thought friend B would say something like that. Maybe I overreacted. I don't know. Am I the a-hole? Nose and Toes says, not the a-hole. I'm just impressed at your restraint. I would have tossed B out the window. Jake Fortune says, not the a-hole. I mean, you could have handled the situation better, but you probably aren't big enough to physically grab B by the collar and belt and throw her out 10 feet into the front yard like in cartoons. Chaton the Danger says, not the a-hole. Not even a little bit. It was a rhetorical question. Her self-righteous attitude needed adjusting, and to be honest, if I were friend A, friend B wouldn't have had time to backpedal. Her comments were rude, distasteful, and downright mean. Bad things happen to everyone regardless of what, if any, religion they follow. Edit. I want to clarify why I think I may have overreacted. I always thought of myself as tolerant and a person who respects other people's views and beliefs, no matter how extreme. This situation made me react in a way that, in my mind, didn't make me a tolerant person because I did throw someone out of my house for saying something that I thought was out of line, but it still was part of their belief system. This is the reason I wanted opinions from fellow Redditors, as I obviously can't be unbiased here. Thank you all for your input. And now, let's continue with the update. It's been a few weeks since the situation happened, so I will start off by saying that ex-friend B did not apologize to friend A for what she said. Matter of fact, she hasn't reached out to either one of us since then. We also didn't reach out to her. Unfortunately, B's words from that day really got to friend A. She struggled with survivor's guilt and questioned her upbringing, lifestyle, views on religion, etc. She doubled her therapy sessions and I spent my free time keeping her company. A couple of weeks ago, I went over to her place and found her reading a Bible and almost obsessively flagging pages. She said she was researching to check if what B told her was true. She started reading excerpts and telling me her interpretations. This behavior did scare me a bit, so I suggested to bring this up to her therapist. It was the only thing I could think of to help calm her down. She did talk to the therapist, who suggested she perhaps talk to a pastor instead of trying to come up with her own conclusions. She asked me to go with her, which I did, but told me to just wait for her at the church while she talked to the pastor privately. After, she said that she felt better and was more convinced that B was full of it. She also seemed calmer, so I believe that conversation did help her. I was at her house on Friday and she told me that she still thinks about what she said and although she feels much better after talking to the pastor, he's only one person and what if he's wrong? I tried to reassure her again and talk through her feelings but I could tell it was still eating at her. 
I had a feeling she might spiral again. Then I had an idea. I told her about the post I made on here and explained why, how it works, etc. She's not a Reddit user. I pulled up my original post and asked her to read the comments to show her how hundreds of people, religious and non-religious, felt about what was said. We spent the evening reading each comment. She cried, she laughed, she was surprised and overwhelmed at the amount of support and reassuring words from all these strangers. I could tell she was more and more relieved as we read. She has been in a much better state of mind since then, so seeing hundreds of people disagreeing with B's words definitely had a positive impact on her. So dear Redditors, Thank you from the bottom of my heart for helping my friend with your kind words and reassurance. She has a long road ahead of her in this grieving process, but she's going strong. Well, this was a really nice update. Stories like these where the community comments have a positive impact on someone and allows them to cope with their feelings is great. This is awesome OP, thanks for sharing this and all the best to friend A. Let's move on to the next post. This one's from user, he's the father. Am I the a-hole for not agreeing to a paternity test unless my husband goes to therapy? I, 28 female, and my husband, 32 male, have a three-year-old son together. There has never been any doubt that my husband is the father. I've never given him any cause for concern that I cheated on him. He acknowledges all of this. Last week, he came to me and said that for the last few months, he has been plagued his word, with this anxiety that our son is not his. They don't look identical, granted, but they definitely share similar features and I see my husband whenever I look at my son. I was obviously blindsided by this. I had no idea he was having these thoughts. I asked him to explain why he thought that he wasn't his and he couldn't really provide any answer other than a gut feeling. He asked me if I would be okay if he got a paternity test done so it could ease his mind. I initially said absolutely not, no way in hell. I was very, very offended. He told me that he could just do it without my permission and I said if he did that, I would never forgive him. My husband does not have a history of anxiety but he did lose his job back at the start of the lockdown so he's been with our son most of the time while I work my full time job from home. I know this hasn't been easy on him. I'm not a psychiatrist or anything, but maybe he is starting to resent our son or something from just having to be around him constantly. After our heated first conversation, I spoke with some friends about it and they said that he was probably having psychiatric problems due to the stress of not having a job. I came back to my husband and said that if he went to therapy and maybe started taking some anti-anxiety meds that I would consider getting the test. He was very upset at this and said that once he got the results of the test he wouldn't be anxious anymore and that I wasn't being fair by making him go through a whole rigmarole, again his word, just to get peace of mind which was a phrase he used a lot during this. He again threatened to just get the test without my permission and I said this would effectively end our relationship. I think there's something more serious going on here and I thought that my solution here is as fair as I'm willing to be. My friends are divided. Some think I should just take the test and others are saying he's being insane and that if I cave to this there's just going to be something else. I need some neutral perspective here. Am I the a-hole? This year as a ghost says, not the a-hole. Even in the best case scenario where this is all due to anxiety brought on by the lockdown, don't believe that after the test he'll be better. Soon it'll be two tests, then three because he'll be afraid of false positive. This type of anxiety gets worse until it moves on to something else. I've had the same obsessive anxiety for years and it didn't get better until after therapy and medication. I still struggle. Stand your ground OP. Edit. I haven't read all the comments here because the amount of responses has been overwhelming. However, I want to say that I really do not appreciate strangers attempting to diagnose my husband over the internet. It is disgustingly presumptuous. I'm his wife and I don't feel qualified to do that, which is exactly why I want him to go to a licensed therapist. Another thing I'm seeing pop up is that I'm somehow demanding that he take medication. I said maybe medication. 
meaning that I only think he should be on medication if a licensed therapist prescribes them to him. I don't want him to shove pills down his throat, which seems to be what some people think I want to do. As for the numerous suggestions of marriage counseling as opposed to individual therapy, I think this is a great idea. I didn't initially consider it because I was so focused on it being his problem, but we are ultimately a team. And I'll suggest that to him today. Hopefully it goes better. Thanks everyone for your input. And now let's continue with the update. Thanks to everyone who commented on my original post. Unfortunately, this is not a great update. If you don't want to read it all, the bottom line is we're heading towards divorce. I took some of the commenter's advice to go to couples therapy, which we did that same week as my first post. I had to push him a bit to get him to agree to the therapy, but I told him it was either this or I would never give in to the test. The first Zoom session was a little awkward since neither of us had ever done therapy before. After listening to both of us, she basically said that she thought we should do the test to see if that eases his anxiety, and that if it doesn't, which at the time was my concern, that we could go from there. So my husband was thrilled, and I agreed, but I wanted to be on Zoom with the therapist when we received the results so we could talk it out with her there, which he was fine with. So we do the test and we did our Zoom session when our results were in. And surprise surprise, the paternity test says he's 99% likely to be the father. He didn't appear relieved or happy or anything of what I expected. Maybe this wasn't fair, but I did expect him to cry and maybe apologize to me for his lack of trust. This wasn't just my imagination though, because when the therapist asked him in our first session how he would feel if the test came back saying he was the father, he said he would feel relieved, but he was angry. He kept saying that it was over and that he didn't want to talk about it. He kept repeating it's done over and over when the therapist would try to ask a question about how he was feeling and he was obviously not listening when I tried to talk about my feelings. And when I told him I wanted to talk about it, he yelled at me, which he never does. What else is there to effing talk about? I was mortified that he was talking to me this way in front of a therapist and she said we should schedule a new session once he had time to process. After the session, he wouldn't look at me or speak to me. The fact that he was so upset that he was our wonderful son's father made me absolutely lose my mind. We screamed at each other and it ended with me saying that I can't do this anymore. He's at his brother's apartment now finally away from our son, which is obviously what he wanted all along. And my mom is now staying at my place to help me out around the house. I texted him this weekend asking if he wanted to do another therapy session and he asked if I really thought that would help and I had to admit that I didn't. The speed at which this whole thing happened, just a month ago I would have said we have a happy marriage, is still completely shocking to me. But I don't see us recovering from this. This felt cathartic to type out though, so thanks I guess. I'm sorry OP, this situation sucks. Your husband definitely has some sort of psychological problem, I would think. I'm not an expert, of course. But as a father, I don't know if I could, you know, just start believing that my child isn't mine out of the blue and then not want to be near him. To be honest, while reading what you typed out, I felt more sorry for your son than I did for your husband. So to this outcome, I can only wish you and your son all the best in the future. This one's from user throwarray7782. Am I the a-hole for bringing my boyfriend to my sister's wedding? My 29 male parents died when I was in elementary school and an old family friend took me in. He's always treated me well. My adopted siblings are awesome and most people assume that we're blood related. My adopted mom has always hated me. She'll act neutral enough around her husband, but she completely tears me down and she's always been like that. My siblings have always had my back 100% and have stood up to her when they could when we were younger. My adopted dad apologizes for her behavior, but it's been about 20 years and I pretty much ran out of the house as soon as I finished high school. I still showed up for holidays and major events. A few years later, when I came out as bi to my family, my mom pretty much used this as a chance to disown me and just openly started insulting me and being nasty. 
my relationship with my siblings hasn't changed much. I video chat and talk to my siblings all the time and visit about once a week since we live in different cities. They don't apologize for their mom's behavior, we just don't talk about her. My sister's wedding was small because of the bug, just close family and friends. I was beyond happy that she was still getting some of her wedding and that she was happy. I brought my longtime best friend, now boyfriend, for a few years. Everyone knows him. He's been in my life for the last 10 years, but we only started dating about a year ago. My sister warned me that her mom would be at the wedding, but she'd already told her to be on her best behavior and deal with it or she'd be uninvited. Her mom promised to be on good behavior. Fortunately, she held it together for the ceremony, but things went downhill at the reception where she started a whole scene about me being there and sprinkled in with stuff about my boyfriend. It went from snide comments and insults to a full-blown argument. My dad managed to get her to calm down and she disappeared for a while and came back later to just ignoring me. But now the whole story made it to our wider family and acquaintances. Both extended families and pretty much everyone are blaming me for picking a fight with her. I didn't approach her at all. My brother is just generally angry because my sister was upset. Brother-in-law is less angry but more worried about her. My dad is apologizing for his wife. I'm glad to have been there to see my sister get married. But I feel like I ruined her big day by just being there and also bringing my boyfriend. He's not mad at my siblings and he's been really understanding, if also angry at pretty much everyone else. Am I the a-hole for going to my sister's wedding and bringing my boyfriend despite her mom hating me? The judgment is not the a-hole. Now let's take a look at the top comments. Bamba John says, not the a-hole. This has nothing to do with your boyfriend. This would have happened anyways, just for a different reason. OP responds, this was the general conclusion my siblings and I came up with after I came out. We all think she was just waiting for an excuse to get rid of me entirely since I was still somewhat around after high school. Insert username says, not the a-hole. Your mother's poorly concealed homophobia isn't your fault, and you were allowed to bring a guest. Who else did your sister expect you to bring besides your significant other? McKinnos says, not the a-hole. Your adoptive mom is. She escalated the situation, it sounds like. Don't let people who weren't there tell you how it should have happened. You didn't mention if your sister is upset or not. Have you talked to her about what happened? If your sister's mad at anyone, it's probably your mom, not you. Sorry this happened to you, OP. OP's edit. The fight was her approaching me to insult me. My otherwise quiet boyfriend defending me. Her insulting him as well. Me arguing back with her. My brother storming over to shut it down but her starting to yell at him. More yelling from me. Then finally the groom came over to get her to relax. Her accusing me of coming because I don't like the groom. I don't. The start of his relationship with my sister was rocky. My brother and I begrudgingly accept him because he makes her happy. Then, my sister and my dad coming over to calm everyone down. My sister said she was okay and it wasn't my fault, but she'd been crying and hasn't talked to anyone but her husband so far. Yeah, OP, you're definitely not the a-hole. Your mother is the one that has the problem and she made a whole scene of it. Now, from your edit, you didn't help too much by actually engaging with her. I think the best thing you could have done is just ignored her for the idiot that she is. She doesn't deserve your time or energy. Of course, if she was insulting your boyfriend, then I could see why you would engage in a fight with her. In any case, you're not the one that started this stupid fight. It was her, so she's the a-hole. And now, let's move on with the update to see what happened. Thanks, everyone. Some people asked about my adoption. My dad pressured my mom into adopting me. He was friends with my birth parents before they died. Adoptive mom thinks he was in love with my bio mom and had him take a paternity test before adopting me. It came back negative. They adopted me. My sister called me back a week after the wedding. She apologized for our mom causing a scene and asked if boyfriend and I were okay. 
I apologized for not immediately removing us from the situation when things went down. We both agreed that our mom would have likely still have caused a scene. She said she was overwhelmed and emotionally exhausted from the stress of replanning the wedding and the fight. She needed time to process and not be on. Brother-in-law was doting on her for a few days while she took some time for herself. Some people said sister was homophobic because she didn't defend me immediately or contact me right after the wedding. My sister is both the oldest sibling and the peacemaker in the family. She might as well be a saint with everything she puts up with between our mom's moods and our dad's hands-off parenting and her younger brothers occasionally being idiots. She's the first person I came out to and my biggest supporter and defender. I never realized how much pressure my family puts on her to be the mature maternal figure until brother-in-law called me out. The angry extended family was a mix of homophobia and anger that they weren't important enough to be there. My brother said their mom was telling people that I'm the one who started things because I hate brother-in-law, her, the in-laws, etc. And a lot of other more dramatic details that didn't happen. It got bad enough that mother-in-law of all people called her a liar and came to my defense. Then mom decided to throw father-in-law being a serial cheater into the argument and now both extended families are flip-flopping sides. Normally, our dad would placate our mom and our sister would try to smooth everything over. She's pretty much hung up to dry on her own. Sister and brother-in-law have gone low contact with her mom. My dad apologized on her behalf to my sister and me. My brother is the only one still talking to her, but only through dad who he feels bad for. We're all dodging the mess that is this fight between the in-laws. Boyfriend and I also discussed things. He's been incredible and I'm going completely no contact with adopted mom. Luckily, neither my dad nor my brother will give my mom my phone number so she can't bother us. We never speak and only see each other roughly every two years, so it's not a loss. I'm not sure how I feel about my dad. I love and appreciate him for adopting me, but we're on shaky ground. That's pretty much it. Yeah, OP, your adoptive mom has issues, man. I thought it was really cool of your sister's mother-in-law to come to your defense and call her a liar. Awesome. I do understand that your relationship with your dad at this point might be a little bit rocky, but try to understand the position he's in between his wife and one of his kids. That's not an easy position to be in. And to all those people that called your sister homophobic for not defending you right away, yeah, they're all wrong. It was her wedding. There was so much stuff going on that defending you probably wasn't in the top priorities. Maybe she just wanted to keep the calm so her wedding didn't collapse. That doesn't mean she doesn't love you or that she would be homophobic. But anyways, that's just my opinion. What do you guys think about this whole wedding ordeal? This one's from user HolidayTill5. Would I be the a-hole for banning my in-laws from our house? My wife is the only daughter and she has two brothers. Her parents have always been slightly biased and sexist towards her. Before, it would be little things. Her parents would give brothers new things and give her the old ones. Or if they had tickets to any event, they would give them to brothers. My wife didn't mind and could overlook it. But my wife just had a baby and I can't handle my in-laws. When my wife is trying to eat meals, they'll say stuff like, Now that the baby is born, you can't still use her for an excuse as to why you're fat. My wife is not close to fat at all and their comments are making her diet when she doesn't need to. Or if my wife is tired, they say stuff like, Wow, you can't even handle one child. Maybe if you pushed yourself to be a better mom, you wouldn't need to call your parents to bail you out. We have never called them to come over. They just come over. My wife decided to take a break from work and be a stay-at-home mom for a while. And I bought her a Lexus because it was top rated for safety. My mother-in-law said, Wow, isn't it nice your husband treats you like a trophy wife when you aren't even a trophy? They don't say things when I'm in the room, but I hear them over the baby monitor. Sometimes I overhear them. Sometimes my wife tells me. I want them to stop and I would like to talk to them, but my wife doesn't want to start any drama. But this is our house and I hate the energy they bring inside of it. 
And the way they make my wife feel, after they leave, she's always down. She's less happy, she isn't as fun. I want to ban them from our house until they learn to respect my wife. But my wife thinks I'm creating a necessary drama. But I cannot raise a family with the energy they bring into our house. It's toxic. My sister told me that I would be overstepping and that this should be agreed on by my wife. But I feel like my wife is trapped in an abusive relationship and she can't control things. I think it's my place as her husband to step in and put a stop to this behavior. It wouldn't be a permanent ban, just temporary until they are able to apologize and act polite in our house. Would I be the a-hole? The judgment is not the a-hole. Now let's take a look at the top comments. Rants for fun says, uh, not the a-hole? Hard to stir up drama when it's dumped on your front doorstep. That behavior is unacceptable and you would be entirely in the right to call it out. I mean, if anything, that house is also half yours as part of the whole marriage thing, right? As such, you at least have the right to not welcome such absolute toxicity into your home. Now, of course, you do need to somewhat honor your wife's wishes, so I would fully warn her beforehand. But even still, like, sorry honey, but I'm putting my foot down on you being called fat and useless. Sorry if that somehow offends you. I'm just downfounded here, but yes, lay down some smack and let them know that in that house, folks respect each other. You absolutely do not need your children being possibly exposed to that as well. Family doesn't mean you put up with being treated like trash. Xanif says, not the a-hole. Her parents are emotionally abusive. Sounds like she's scared of them, but they're never going to apologize. Tiger Lily 601 says, Not the a-hole. If they treat her like that, they'll treat your kids like that. They need to learn before your kid gets old enough to be damaged by it. Opie responds, That's another one of my fears. They are Indian, and it's kind of the norm in their community to set different standards for sons and daughters. Like, my brothers-in-law drink at family events all the time. Not acting like an alcoholic, just casual drinking. But if a female relative were seen drinking, then the whole family would be gossiping and making fun of her parents. Our baby is a girl, and I don't want her having to deal with this kind of BS. OP's edit. Adding an edit because a lot of people keep bringing up therapy. She has been to therapy about this. I pushed for it, and we have also been together. She understands that this isn't okay. We won't allow our child, children, to be raised like this. But she doesn't want to cause drama in the community, alienate her family. She does not want to have this discussion with her parents because she can't see the benefits in the long run and doesn't want to be a bad child in the short run. So that's what I feel like I need to take this on because when you're in an abusive relationship, it's okay to get help from others when you can't help yourself. She doesn't want me to do anything that might damage my own relationship with her parents by sticking up for her. Edit 2. My wife is Indian. We live in the USA. She and her siblings were born in the USA. Her parents were born in India but came to the USA as children. I am white. Our baby is a baby girl but we hope to have many more kids in the future. OP, I'm totally with you. You would not be the a-hole if you stood up for your wife. Here's what I believe. Respect is a two-way street. Unfortunately, it seems that your wife is bound by culture and that she can't stand up to her elders. I think it could help if your wife views it as you are her direct family. You, your child, and her are the nucleus, and everybody outside of that circle comes second. But then again, that's just my opinion. In any case, of course we have an update, so let's check out the update to see what happened. Hi everyone, it's been a while. I check into Reddit sporadically and have received a lot of requests for an update, but the situation kept updating, so it's taken a while. First of all, I showed all of your comments to my wife. There was a lot of back and forth because as nice and supportive as most of your replies were, at the end of the day, my wife said none of you were in her shoes and wouldn't have to deal with any consequences. I told my wife that I would just have to take the executive decision to ban them from our house because I don't want that energy around my family. 
Of course, due to the bug, they didn't really see this as a big deal and just assumed it would be best for the baby to not have any guests, even immediate family, in the house. My wife kind of liked this because it felt like a way to sidestep the drama and still have some space. But that didn't really do anything to change their behavior. But then we found out my wife was pregnant again, only 10 months after our first. This was obviously sooner than we had anticipated, but it also sort of sparked something in my wife. I guess she follows some of those old wives tales about guessing the gender, and she feels like this time we're having a boy. I think the prospect of having a boy really shocked her and forced her to realize she doesn't have a huge timeline to be able to correct a lot of these issues she has with her parents. Because as soon as our son is born, she knows our daughter is going to have to deal with their BS the same way my wife did. So she decided to meet her parents by herself and set out what her expectations were and if they failed to follow them, then they weren't going to meet our son or any other future children. Her parents, I guess, assumed she was bluffing and tried to come over and call me. I told them I don't make the rules and I'm not going around my wife. So they called my wife and told her that they would do their best to improve and fix any mistakes that were pointed out to them in their behavior. I guess that has been good enough for now. While we still have banned visitors to the house, my wife has resumed FaceTime calls. I've seen a huge improvement in my wife's mood. So thanks Reddit for your feedback and support. Wow, OP, this is fantastic news. Color me impressed because, in my ignorance, I assumed it would be very difficult or impossible for them to accept that they were doing anything wrong, much less try to fix any mistakes that were pointed out to them. So honestly, I'm very happy that my assumption was completely wrong and that the relationship between your wife and her parents has improved and your wife's mood is better. That's what's important. So congratulations again, and all the best to your growing family. This one's from user According Atmosphere Zero. A mighty a-hole. My twin's significant other is angry he is helping to raise my kids. My twin and I, 31 male and female, have been very close as our parents both passed away early and we ended up living with my uncle, who very clearly did not want us. Our lives were going relatively fine until I became a mother at 21 and dropped out of college to focus on my mental health. The pregnancy took a huge toll. I didn't manage to graduate in the end and ended up in retail, but my brother did and worked extra hard to both get great working experience and good grades to help supplement my income. And with his help, we managed to make things work. Since then, our paths diverged. He has gone on to become a successful business owner and I am happy with the craft related job I have. That allows me to work from home and gives me time to take care of my own set of twins. We've remained close though and he has not stopped taking care of my kids. Since his business took off about 5 years ago, he has paid for most if not all of the kids expenses and contributing to their savings. While I am not 100% sure of his income. I can safely say it is probably in the mid-high six figures. He spends probably about 100k each year on the kids in various forms. Investments, gifts, schooling, etc. When he first started dating Jane and the kiddos were seven, she was not happy that he would stay over sometimes to help babysit overnight to give me a break and spend time with the kids instead of going out with her. She was also unhappy that we slept in the same bed when he did that. I was in a one bedroom apartment at the time and the alternative was basically a wooden platform that doubled as my couch. He stopped doing both at her behest, but she never really liked me after that. Throughout the past four years, she has been throwing snide remarks about me, about my brother paying for my kids, which I accept because he is paying for them and that is his choice. But recently, she posted a disgusting comment on social media implying that my brother was the father of the twins and how disgusting it was that I was forcing him to pay for them. It was deleted within the hour, but I managed to get a screenshot. I have thus two questions. One, am I the a-hole for accepting his financial help to give my kids a better life than the one I can afford? He has expressed many times over the years that he is extremely happy to do so. Two. 
Would I be the a-hole for sending the screenshot to my brother? Knowing him, it would probably mean the end of their relationship as he did not treat the last guy who implied that in front of me well and cut ties with him. The judgment is not the a-hole. Now let's take a look at the top comments. Court in the middle. Not the a-hole. I'd sent it. He seems like a lovely guy and he loves you and the kids. If it was causing him financial stress, it'd be different, but he's choosing to help out, which is just so nice. He may as well know she feels this way before he puts a ring on it. She's probably more jealous though, and that translates to anger. She's concerned that her future with him will always be tied with you, which it will, and she'll never be able to win, because it shouldn't be a competition. Coconut X Kitten says, not the a-hole. If your twin has chosen to help you, that's his choice. He clearly loves your kids and is a good uncle. His girlfriend's attitude towards you is super nasty and the fact she keeps implying incest is really disgusting on her part. Adventures to Come says, Not the a-hole. Your brother has every right to provide whatever support he wants to his family. If his significant other has a problem, then she needs to take it up with him. Not use passive-aggressive social media posts to attack you. You need to tell your brother. This wasn't just an attack on you, it was an attack on him as well. He needs to know what his significant other is saying behind his back. Especially when it's something that could affect his family dynamic. OP's edit to add. 1. The twin's bio father is not and will never be in the picture. 2. As his business took off earlier, my brother asked me to spend more time at home with the twins, as my earlier retail jobs had me out 50 plus hours. My current job has earned me more money over the years, as I have been able to build up a stock of digital patterns that are for sale. Of course, I wouldn't be able to provide the same quality of life if I raised them on my money alone, and I am not proud enough to yank them out of their schools, activities, and life just so I can say I raised them alone. 3. Yes, his girlfriend knew of the arrangement early on in their relationship. 4. Last I asked, he said he has no plans for kids of his own. So, OP, to keep it simple, you are not the a-hole at all. But your brother's girlfriend is definitely the a-hole in this story. First of all, it is your brother's money. He gets to do whatever he wants with it. If he wants to give it to your kids, then that's his prerogative. If he wants to throw it down a sewer pipe, that'd be stupid, but he could also do that too. And of course, the girlfriend doesn't get a say. And as for your second question, no, you would not be the a-hole if you send him the screenshot. Because that's how she truly feels about your relationship with your brother. And he deserves to know about this because this is a sensitive topic for him. So yeah, you should send that screenshot and then let the chips fall where they may. But that's just my opinion. So now we move on to the update to see what happened after this. Wow, it's been almost a year. Just remembered this account and thought I'd log in to give an update. In the end, I didn't let my brother know of the screenshots until after they broke up. She was pressuring him to get married and he didn't want to. All things considered, 2020 could have gone worse. The twins have adapted well to the many, many changes in school environments this year and I'm so proud of them. I'm also earning quite a lot more this year due to the bug as more people are crafting. Seeing how so many people thought I was a leech gave me quite the shock. Honestly, I would never stop putting my kids first, and that includes making sure that they have access to everything they need, even if that means accepting money so that they live a better life. But it also made me reevaluate what I'm doing for me, and what would happen in the next 10 years. So, I'll be going back to finish my bachelor's. The credits still count. In the fall this year. Smiley face. Well, OP, it sounds like good news all around. First of all, your brother ended the relationship with that lump. Then your business picked up because of the conditions of the health crisis. And now you're going back to college. That's just great news all around. Congratulations, OP. All the best for 2021. As for the rest of us, since there's still some time left in the video, I'm going to read a very special Am I the A-hole post that doesn't have an update because it doesn't need it. So let's get going with that. This one's from user Big Spooky Spooks. Am I the a-hole for eating all of my wife's Toblerone, then buying a new one? Yesterday, a mutual friend came over and gave her a gift of a Toblerone from his holiday in Switzerland. 
She agreed I could have some, so I did. She's out for a few days and my temptation got the best of me, so I ate the rest of an almost full packet. She has a habit of leaving food out to spoil, so I assumed it was all good to eat, but she sent me a message to make sure that there's some of the chocolate left for her. F. It was already gone. So I've just rushed to the shop to get a new one in expectance that I am a dead man when she gets back. She once flipped out at me for eating her year-old decorative pasta, so I'm not taking chances. Toblerone is replaced with even more than there was previously. Not sure if I should put it in the Swiss packaging or apologize and just tell her that I bought a new one. For now, I'm keeping quiet. Like a parent discovering the dead goldfish and then doing the old switcheroo. I'm in the UK by the way, so the recipe is exactly the same as the one in Switzerland. Am I the a-hole? Also, she religiously reads this sub, so if she comes across this, gee, I love you and I hope you forgive me like you did with the pasta. The judgement is, you're the a-hole. Now let's take a look at the top comments. GLDEM123 says, What? Oh my effing god, I can't believe you ate my chocolate. I'm actually screaming, dude, this is so funny. The title caught my eye and I screenshotted it to send it to you like, this is something you would do. And now I'm shaking. Oh my effing god, this is so funny. You're the a-hole. I forgive you. I'm crying laughing in the toilet at work. Opie responds, heart, 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 many hearts. F, thank god. Opie's edit. She effing saw the post and replied, but seriously, never again. And there you go. OP's the a-hole, his wife saw the post, she commented, she judged him, she forgave him, and that's it. This one's from user throwaway invite. Would I be the a-hole for not inviting my sister to my wedding as she's joked about ruining it after I ruined hers? Three years ago, my ex-boyfriend proposed to me at my sister's wedding, in front of everyone, while giving what was meant to be a best man speech. He was friends with the groom. It was not approved by anyone, especially not me or my sister, and I said no in front of everyone, and he stormed out. This definitely distracted from events, so I left shortly after, apologizing profusely. It's been a few years since then. My sister has said she's over it, but she really isn't because she brings it up every time we see each other, and she's made it clear that she still holds a grudge. We were really close before, I was her maid of honor, but after that, she sort of pulled away from me. I'm now engaged, not to the proposal guy, to another fella. We're planning the wedding for early 2022. My sister has been joking about payback for years now, saying that when I get married, she's going to do something to ruin the wedding. I don't know what, but I have my theories. The front runner being announcing a pregnancy or some other milestone during the reception. We've had a conversation recently, about a month ago, where she said something like that. And I've said, I know my ex was a douche, but please remember that I didn't want him to do that and please don't pull a stunt at my wedding. And her response has usually been something like, Whoa, yeah, I bet someone announcing a major milestone at your wedding would really ruin your event, though you probably wouldn't understand that unless it happened to you. Or words to that effect. I have apologized multiple times, but it's been three years and she still holds a grudge against me. I was talking with my mom earlier. She asked if I started planning yet. I said no, and my mom says that I should get my sister to help, and I just sort of said that I'm not even sure about inviting her. It just kind of slipped out, to be honest. In the rest of the conversation, I admitted, after mom pressed me, that I was unsure about inviting her because of these jokes she's made over the years. Because if three, nearly four years later, she's still making these jokes, then they're probably not jokes anymore, and inviting her might not be a good idea. Don't get me wrong, I'm not one of those brides that expects everyone to just put their lives on hold for my wedding, but I feel like she's basically said that she's planning to F up my wedding. Mom, however, thinks I'm being unfair, that my sister is allowed to have feelings about her wedding day and about mine, because my ex's actions did affect her day and said that my sister is most likely only joking and I shouldn't take what she said seriously and definitely shouldn't leave her off the guest list for my wedding because of the jokes. She's also said that if my sister isn't invited, 
Then she, as in mom, won't go either, in solidarity, and called me a bridezilla. Would I be the a-hole for not inviting my sister? The judgment is not the a-hole. Now let's take a look at the top comments. Cleromanticon says, not the a-hole. If your sister wants to ruin a wedding, she should show up uninvited to your ex's wedding, if he ever gets married, and ruin his wedding, not yours, because he's the person who wronged her. You were both victims of his behavior, and I'm sorry that she can't see that and is transferring the blame onto the wrong person. Purple Vixen says, not the a-hole. I'd elope if I was you. You can't win. If you don't invite your sister, your family will try to guilt you into it. If you do invite her, you'll spend all day waiting for her to misbehave and ruin everything. Don't cave and invite your sister unless she solemnly promises not to seek petty revenge. And, even then, get someone to keep an eye on her and throw her out if she looks like she's starting something. Good luck. OP responds, We're seriously considering eloping. Neither myself or my partner particularly like being the center of attention and everything is just so expensive. We've already discussed guest list and we've barely been able to come up with a dozen people to invite. Sound like but actually says not the a-hole. But I think you need to sit your sister down and have a serious conversation about this. Explain that unless you get some convincing reassurances that she won't do anything to intentionally cause drama at your wedding, she will not be invited. Just make sure that you are certain on this path. Not inviting your sister is almost certainly going to cause some serious headaches for you with your family and possibly create rifts that cannot be mended. You wouldn't be the a-hole, but just be sure that you are willing to accept the potential consequences of not inviting her. Let's move on to the next post. This one's from user throwaway issue 34. Am I the a-hole for leaving after my husband invited his parents to our first wedding anniversary? Me, female 26, and my husband, male 25, got married a year ago. I'm the kind of person that really likes celebrating a special occasions that are important to me. Before my husband and I got married, he promised to take us somewhere nice on our first wedding anniversary. And since my wedding was an absolute disaster, thanks to my in-laws, mother-in-law to be specific, I saw this as a chance to have another special day to celebrate my relationship with my husband. But things have been rough the past few months. I'm five weeks pregnant and our whole plan changed. My husband suggested we have dinner at a nice restaurant that his mom picked for us. Huh? And recommended. Okay, now she's trying to get involved this year too. Anyways, he showed me pictures and the type of food they served and asked me to pay. It's an expensive restaurant. I suggested we pick another, but he insisted. I agreed and once we got there, I found that the menu wasn't there, which was weird because I was ready to order. After about 15 minutes of my husband stalling, his parents walked up to our table dressed nicely and sat with us. I looked at my husband for an explanation, but he avoided me to tell his mom that the food they wanted was ordered ahead. His mom immediately made backhanded comments about my hair, dress, weight, and didn't stop. I was literally mad. She and her son started drinking while my father-in-law started talking to me about politics. The final straw was when she cancelled the cake I wanted and replaced it with the one her husband liked. I got up, told my husband to hand me the keys or I was going to walk. He tried to calm the situation and that's when his awful mom started talking about me acting inappropriately. She told her son to just hand me the keys cause she didn't want me to embarrass her. I left. An hour later my husband came home, started berating me for overreacting and ruining dinner. I yelled at him what the f was he thinking inviting his parents. He said that they paid for it so he had to invite them. Started arguing saying that he saw nothing wrong with what he did. He didn't even tell me and argued about how I was being awful to his family. I went to my mom's after he insulted me and I've been feeling bad ever since. His mom texted me but I ignored her. Am I the a-hole? Final Commission 4160 says not the a-hole, but why did you get married to him in the first place? Also, unless he commits to serious couples counseling and working on diminishing himself from his mom, you might not want to be married much longer. Half Poop says, if it was me, 
I'd leave him now before having a life of regrets. One audience 7821 says, not the a-hole. So my in-laws were similar. My husband did some of what your husband did and we're still married 10 years and two kids later so I hope you listen to my advice. Marriage counseling as soon as possible. Find a trusted family member on your husband's side, if possible, to tell him his parents are bat ass crazy. Individual therapy for you, for everything that is going on, to also decide how to proceed with your pregnancy. You are only 5 weeks along and you have options. I really hope it gets better. OP responds, I doubt if he'll ever realize that still having his mom doing things, paying for things, is not acceptable. She uses this as a way to control him and us. They showed up without him saying anything because they paid for the dinner so they thought they could hold this over our head and expect me to just smile and accept being disrespected like that. It's my first anniversary. This is the very first time I experienced this and she, mother-in-law, ruined it. And that's it for this video. If you'd like, here are other videos from my channel that you would enjoy. Now, don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next video.